Hello there and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to talk you through the stages of preparing a good sized piece of heavy duty watercolour board, preparing it with texture paste and a palette knife and then showing you how to apply acrylic inks and plenty of water to create a very organic and rather beautiful non-objective acrylic abstract painting. This non-objective means that it's not meant to be anything that you would necessarily see in nature although you might find shapes in it. It can be any shape that you like. I will show you the form I've chosen. Please bear with me. It is a slightly longer video than normal, but there is a lot of information in it. And I hope you will enjoy it and I'll catch up with you at the end. So first of all, we're going to start by adding our texture paste. This is the Daily Daler Rowney texture paste, which I always use, or you can actually make your own using paint with some sand mixed into it. Any dry sand will work quite well, but this is perfect for this. It goes on really nice and smooth. And we're just going to experiment with putting some different shapes. I'm using a long, slim palette knife, which I find really handy for stuff like this that is in a large space. If you've only got a small piece of paper, obviously use the size of knife that fits accordingly. So you're smoothing out the texture paste, creating some shapes. I'm going for more of an organic sort of shape here, whether it's a wave or some flowers or petals, whatever we see it as when it's done. I like using organic shapes with the inks because the fluidity lends itself really nicely to organic shapes and we can get a nice flow going. So really just apply it where you feel comfortable, where you want to get the highlights, the texture, and just make sure that you balance where you put it on the paper. You've got a quite a big piece of paper to fill, so you can put on as much or as little as you want. Don't be too timid with it. It's not difficult to work with. And the more you put on, the more texture you'll get and the more interesting little things happen when you start to put inks with it. I'm just going to continue putting the paste on now, making sure that I get roughly a sort of shape that I want. And I will come back to you in a little moment because there are some different sorts of palette knives that you can use, which I will show you, um, but you can use other things as well. So these are the palette knives I was telling you about. There are different shapes, they've got different edges to their blades. And as you can see, you can create really interesting channels. This one I particularly like, even though I didn't really know what it was going to do when I bought it. But it actually makes really nice texture. And along this ridge here, it almost looks like sort of little barnacles or whatever, little crustaceans into the texture. So have a play about with them. You can use a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. I wouldn't recommend using the one you currently use. Uh, you can use cocktail sticks. You could use sticks from the garden. Anything that you see around your house that you think will make an interesting texture. Plastic forks are very good because you've got the, the tines you can use sort of to make different patterns and scrape through texture. So it doesn't have to be expensive palette knives. It can be things that you find lying around that you just want to use to make something interesting. The beauty is you can go back in if you decide to get rid of some of the texture that you've put. You can actually easily get rid of it, smooth it back down again, just using the ordinary knife. You can use a credit card, an old plastic credit card if you haven't got a knife. Just smooth out where you want it smooth and give texture where you feel you'd like it. And now that everything is nice and dry, I'm actually going to go in with this water spray now and start just squirting around where I want the first layers of inks to go. This will create a nice space for it to flow. So I'm going to start with this lovely bright yellow. This is processed yellow. And this is one of the Dale Rowney uh, FW inks. Just dotting it into a few places. You can see I'm being sort of quite random really, because the idea is that we're going to move all of this about. And to get it moving, a little bit more moisture, 
You'll see me doing this a lot, so please bear with me. I will speed up a lot of this process because you will just get tired of seeing me add ink and squirt. But this is how it moves. This is how we get the ink to blend together. And obviously this is a bright yellow, but once we start to put other colours in, it's going to change. If your paper is quite thick, it might take quite a bit to get it to move, so don't be afraid to use the spray. That's what your heavy watercolour paper is all about. Dab off any bits that squirt anywhere that you don't want. At this point you can remove wet ink very easily, but once it's dry, it's there, it's permanent. The only way to get rid of it is to go over it with some more paste or some more acrylic paint. Now I'm going to add in this beautiful turquoise colour. And obviously turquoise and yellow are going to mix together to make their own particular shade of green, which is fine. Some areas will stay turquoise, some will become greener. And more spray. Now you can start to see how these beautiful colours are merging together and they'll move in and around the texture paste. So some of it will go onto the texture paste and soak in and others will actually move around the channels that we've created by adding the textured lines, dots and other little marks that we've made. This is what we want, this is the effect that we want to start getting those interesting shapes and colours forming. Adding in this red now which will probably be a base for other colours later on so it doesn't harm to start off with this colour but it might be that you don't want to keep it as a bright colour as time moves forward. Now I'm going to add the darkest colour into this mix. This is the indigo. This is what will give it base and give it depth and other colours will merge with it to create their own shades as they do with the others. So I'm just going to push it around with a little bit of water this is just from a, a plastic pipette just to get it moving. A little bit of a bubble there, that's okay. And now we can start the tilting pro process to get that merging in with these other colours. You'll see now that the process is where I continue to add moisture, dabbing out in areas that I want to take out the colour or the ink that's already spread, or then adding more colour in. In different areas we can add colours on top. The beauty with acrylic inks is that once the layer has dried, we can add others over the top without it disturbing that layer. So we can mix different colours and get different uh, effects by doing that process. So I will continue to put this forward. I'll cut it every now and again just to explain. But I think you get the gist. It's about keeping the moisture moving, using your water spray, tipping to make sure that it moves. If you use a brush, it's not going to have the same effect, although you can actually encourage colour to move just simply by wetting your brush and pulling it into the colour and making it move along the line you've just wet. So there's lots of different ways to get the colour moving, but as you can see, wet and tipping is the best technique. So I'll let you see how things progress and I should come back to you. Now I've added some of the various colours in, so we've got some of the burnt sienna in there, a little bit more of the red, and now I've added some more of that beautiful indigo down at the bottom because I want the balance to have a form and an anchor. It's okay people expecting abstracts to be very varied, which they are, but they still need to have the basic principles um, observed. And if you've just got a shape that's floating around with no anchor to it, it just doesn't have any context at all. So in this case, we want the effect of a dark shadow underneath our forms that we've created with the texture paste. So we've added that deep colour underneath. And I will add more to this as time goes on. But I want to explain why it is that I've added that in. And again, adding the depth in different places on your painting will tie it together. You need to have those ties of colour. So if there's an area that's lacking, or you plus, place it in one place, try and balance it by putting it into another one as well. It will help with the balance of the picture in the long run.
I promise you haven't gone crazy here with this. I have turned the page upside down. So I'm just wetting this area now with a soft brush because I want the paint to now run downhill again. And it's much easier to actually turn the painting upside down to do this. So I'm starting to add the depth now in between those shapes that we formed. And that will tie in with the dark base that we've put beneath them. So again, it's more adding, more spraying and more tilting. Liking how the colours are moving together and there's some areas yet which we have got to add a little bit more depth to. Okay, so here I have an old plastic lid and I'm going to mix some more of that dark green rather than let it mix on the actual page itself. I'm going to mix them together. So it's just a good amount of the yellow ink and the indigo, only a tiny drop really, just mix them together on the palette. Because these are primary colours, we can, uh, we can mix our own shades. So it's very useful to be able to do that. And obviously, if you're not happy, you can just add a little bit more of either, a little bit more indigo to make it a bit darker. And then we'll have our nice dark green colour. I've just zoomed in a little bit here for you to see what I'm actually doing with this green. I'm going in with the wet area underneath that white part and just adding it carefully with the brush. Rather than just dropping it in, I'm actually using the brush and pushing the colour to where I want it to go. It's a little bit more controllable that way because I do want a specific kind of shape that I can pick out from the texture paste. And doing it with the dropper and hoping that the water will help it run isn't going to do it quite as much as I'd like in this case. So it's back to the manual brushing and mixing with the water to blend it all together. I've actually decided I'm not that keen on this red area so I'm going to actually add a little bit more red ink in and also some more of the indigo. What I'm looking for now is a sort of more purpley bluey red rather than this bright crimson red which I think is just a little bit too red. I did say at the beginning that the red may end up being the base for something else going over the top and this is the beauty of the acrylic inks. It's not going to make a muddy mess of the colour underneath but we can actually adjust it and change it to the colour that we want. It will still retain the warmth and I might leave a little bit of the pink but mostly it's going to be blended into something different. I do like this yellow area that's actually kept itself very very clean so I'm going to work around that area because I want to keep it I think it makes an interesting little window and a little eye catcher in the piece so I'm going to keep that there and just work around that bit So for this little area here, I want to just brush colour across the top of the textured areas. I want to retain some of the white inside it. Um, so I'm just brushing across with some of the indigo and some of the turquoise just to pick those shapes out so that they really give that lovely boost of texture there. So now we can see where we're getting up to. I'm going to add a little bit more colour into this area here um, because although I like the white, I want it to blend a little bit more.
I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you like the picture that we've created so far. You will see that there are some slight tweaks that I finished just after we left the recording. Not very much and by itself it will stand alone as a beautiful painting. With a mount and a frame it will be perfect for somebody. However, I do like to add a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture and certainly some metallics to my work. So in the next video I'll show you how to use the heavier body paints and a palette knife and various other means just to pep up this painting and just add that extra little bit of class to it. I'd love you to join me for that. Please do and follow on. Thank you very much for joining me so far. Bye bye.